Helix. In terms of the lecture versus active learning debate, talk about your research findings that rather than choosing the right modality, we really need to avoid choosing the wrong time allotment for any activity. I hear all the time from people saying, well, the reason that students aren't paying attention in, in higher education is because people are lecturing. And what we need to do is get rid of the lecture. Students can't pay attention to a lecture for 45 minutes or an hour or 75 minutes. And that's true. But it's also true that students have trouble paying attention to a 75 minute discussion. To me, the solution is not so much to argue for any one particular teaching strategy, but it's to recognize that all of our teaching strategies are going to have limits. They're going to push up against the limits of our students' attention. We want to make sure that we're planning our classes in ways that I like to think about as modular. So I might have a 50 or 75 minute class, two or three things I have planned. I've thought about them deliberately in terms of how they're going to support and sustain student attention. Jim, your research uncovers how important the presence of the instructor is in capturing student attention. How might we translate those learnings into the remote world of many of our classrooms today when an instructor's presence is visually limited to a smaller square within a relatively small square to begin with? One of the things I argue in the book is that attention is reciprocal. The more attention I pay to you, the more attention you are gonna pay to me. So in a classroom, the teacher can do that by moving around the room, calling out individual students to engage in conversation, inviting everyone into the room, doing things that are gonna help build that sense of community. Those things are all definitely more challenging in the remote classroom. So we have to think creatively. We have to think about, for example, how we are inviting students in by name. In a Zoom call, we can see everyone's names, and that's actually an advantage. We can think about the extent to which we are trying to build community in the online classroom, the extent to which students feel like they are recognized as unique individuals with strengths that they're bringing into the classroom.